This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, let me see. Let me show you me. Okay, that's me. Actually, I'm showing myself. I, I didn't know till the last minute, and I mean literally the last minute, what I was going to do with the show. Whether I was uh, going to go to an interview that I have uh, ready to go with Stephen Pearl, or whether I would uh, take the uh, first half hour of the show for myself. And uh, I, I, I still don't know what to do because I don't have a hell of a lot to talk about. And so I, you know, I wonder about that. But anyway, um, so I am uh, sitting here saying, well, should I play the interview I have with Stephen Pearl or wait till tomorrow night to do it? Or should I sit here and talk to you? And I thought I would leave it kind of up to you. Do we have a lot of people listening at all at the present time? Wait, wait a minute. Uh, how many people do we have? Oh, it says we have nine people there. If you would like me to talk for the next half hour, send across some smiley faces. And if you would like me to do, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, the, play the interview with Stephen Pearl, do a thumbs up. Okay. And that way, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get an idea. If there's anybody out there who even wants to vote on this uh, procedure, well, let me see here, because it takes a little while before uh, it gets out to you, what I just said. Well, there, here come some smiley faces that want to see me suffer for the next half hour. I don't see any thumbs up for the uh, interview with Stephen Pearl. They're, they're, uh, let, me, let me see here. Oh, there's some there's some thumbs up, uh, uh, yeah. But then we're back to smiley faces again, uh, and uh, it looks like the uh, smiley faces are winning. Well, the thumbs up are kind of picking up a little bit. Uh, uh, let me. Yeah, well, uh, okay. I I don't know. See, I mean, one person could could be doing the thumbs up right. And, uh, and, and doing it over and over and over and over again. And the people with the smiley faces could be doing the same thing because now the thumbs up say they want to have an interview with Stephen Pearl. What should I do? What should I do? Uh, a, thumbs, a thumbs up if you don't want to hear me. That's really what we're saying. Uh, let me see here. It, it looks like all the thumbs up are the same person, though. Well, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, well, then I, 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 uh, I, I noticed that there are more thumbs up than there are smiley faces, uh, so uh, I think we'll go to the interview. Why don't we do that, okay? And then tomorrow night I can do all the talking because obviously you don't want to hear me talk for the next half hour, and no, I just, you know, what the hell, you know. We'll do what we can do. Anyway, um, here's Stephen Pearl. All right, you asked for it, you get it. Well, it's time once again to do what we normally do when we want to talk to somebody that we know. We surprise him by dialing him up and uh, uh, hearing what he has to say. Let's see here. Let's go with the ringing of the phone. Let's see what happens here. Come on, start ringing. There we go. There we go. It's the Jeff Foxworthy outtakes. If you say we don't burn the cross, we light the cross, you might be a redneck. <laughs> if you say we don't wear sheets, we wear robes, you might be a redneck. Yeah, if you say we don't hate the colors and the Jews, you just want to stay with our own people, you might be a redneck. And if you kick your sister in the cunt for holding hands with a Jew, you might be a redneck. Hey, what's up? What's up with you? That was my little bouncy, happy beginning. I thought you'd enjoy that. Yeah, I thought that was a good, happy, bouncy, happy. <laughs> Thank you. You need an opening. You got to have an opening. We're clean, too. You ladies, make it business. ladies and gentlemen, on? let me introduce the voice to which you are listening. That is Stephen oh. Pearl. Hello, Stephen. Thank you very much. I was almost big in the 80s once. Look at me now. Yeah. Uh, I, I was a has-been. Or I am a has-been. <laughs> I would, it, never was. It would, it would be nice to be. <laughs> hand in hand with it was nice. Would be nice to say I was a has been. You know, <laughs> I was a has been. Now I'm an am is. 
Now, I get all these trolls online, you know, when I do my show, I get, they write stuff, and uh, they call me a has-been. They say you're, you're, uh-huh. you're, you're, you know, oh, you're an asshole and things like that. And um, uh, when they say I'm a has-been, I, I freely admit to it, you know. Yeah, I was there, baby. I was at the mountaintop, and, uh, and you're still listening anyway. So thanks. You know, the only <laughs> you're thing, still listening as long as they listen. The only thing that never happened every year they announce who the latest uh, people are being put into the broadcasting, the radio hall of fame. Uh huh. And <laughs> they never even think about me. You know. Well, the, all the awards and halls of fame are all bullshit. Yeah. Look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Johnny well, and Edgar Winter aren't even in it, and Madonna is. Thank you. Check, please. I'm out of here. Well, let's see. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area Hall of Fame, Radio Hall of Fame. Well, that's good. That's, well, that's not chop liver, you know. It's not, that's not Wooster, Ohio. It, it's the real thing there. Yeah, but I think, I think that I have contributed more than, say, the people who are, are – this year, a guy by the name of Elvis Duran here in New York is being honored with the Hall of Fame – and I say to myself, uh-huh. what's he fucking done except make himself rich? You know, what's you he go. done to expand the business and to expand the way in which we do broadcasting? He d- hasn't done about, shit, about, you know? Yep. It's all about money. You invented, a, you invented a format, which somebody, some other people copied and some people prospered mightily with, but you invented it. And, uh, you know, yeah. And I, I, I mean, you I, way. Back when, when I was in high school, on, uh, late at night. Yeah, I've been in quite a few things. I mean, I, at least I was the in first York, to do them. It? You know, I was a pioneer. And uh, yet, sure. it, when it comes to the National Broadcasting Hall of Fame, what, Elvis Duran? Eh, fuck you. <laughs> and and uh, it's nothing. Uh, it means nothing. Oh, Wendy, means nothing. I think, really I think Wendy Williams made it because she was in radio. She, she was in the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Big old Wendy. God bless Wendy. Yeah. God bless Wendy. You know. I God mean, bless Wendy. Big girl. God bless you. A big girl with a big heart. And she got so loud. God now, bless Wendy. Now, along with being a has been comes a certain level of bitterness, which I also embrace. <laughs> as long as it doesn't come with heavy drinking or your heavy heart stuffing, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll, you know. that'll fuck you up. You can be bitter, but be, be a healthy bitter guy. I mean, I can't, I can't complain. I mean, I had a good career, but you know the terrible thing about having a good career and then not having it any longer is not having it any longer. There you go. The, yeah, that's you the know? bad part. So maybe it would be part. better if I was a never was, then I wouldn't be missing <laughs> anything. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Does that make sense? It does, uh, it does, but nah, it's good to have tasted it, the the fruit from the the, the legend tree or whatever you want to call yeah, it, the fruit yeah. from the, the look at me tree, I've made it tree, but uh, at this point, I don't even care, you know, as long as the bills are getting paid, I got a lot of money for, you know, toys here and there, the I don't are, give a shit, well, well, <laughs> I don't give a shit, I don't have to perform every night, man, you know. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in my like John Lennon five years, maybe more longer semi-retirement phase, so. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, uh, you, you, I mean, you work, you know. You, it's so, there, so, yeah, not so, as much. I won't go on the road anymore unless it's Canada or something. But uh, no, I, I want to stay in the. I don't want to fly anywhere. I don't want to fly anywhere. I don't want to. I like staying in the area. For the well, I, I also I do. Uh, you know the the nightly show. Uh, here on yeah. Gabnet, you, yeah, you're active. You got yeah, stuff yeah. going on, and I've got five people who listen to it. It's really good. It's really good. You know, we get, <laughs> they're, a, they're, a, they're a good five, man. The yeah. Beatles are only four people. Look what they did. Come on. I think on a good day, I've got about 750 people listening or something like that. You know, Uh-oh. That's good. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. If there was any justice, they would have known what we were doing in the 80s, and you would have been syndicated before Howard Stern, and we would have all prospered mightily. We, but, that's what they should have done. Well, you know what the problem We were doing something totally different and really funny. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's guys on the radio, there's two guys in the morning out here on KGO who are getting paid obscene money, and they fucking suck. And our worst show was, was back then was like a thousand times better than what's going on now. Oh, well, who, are, who are these guys? Armstrong and Getty. Oh, they they're not even. Suck. They're two abbots in desperate need of a Costello. They're not even in San Francisco. They're coming out of Sacramento. It's a cheap way. Sacramento, of Sacramento, yeah. Well, they, the, oh, it's God, a they cheap way. They it, yank the plug on them. It's a cheap <laughs> way of doing a morning show. In fact, KGO yeah. in San Francisco just announced uh, Ron Owens is 
pretty much finished he's, there. Yeah, he's got like a 10-minute spot now every day. Brian Copeland, the one guy I like listening to, is gone, which totally sucks. And it's just, they pretty much, you know, so and, I'm and, and what are, and, life and, they have left and, them. And what are they replacing it with? Syndication. You know, yeah, Dr. Uh, Drew, uh, the Hollywood uh, horror, everyone loves. No, Dr. so Drew. Armstrong and Getty have been on, God, 20 years in San Francisco, and they still haven't caught fire. They're <laughs> fucking horrible. There's nothing there. No, it's just they laugh you, at their own jokes, but they're not even jokes. You, you, hey, I had to go to the bathroom today. I guess they had to really go a bad. <laughs> well, That's what they do, man. It's fucking up. It's just it's, it's offensive because it's so unfunny. Well, they're, they're, the, the reason why they've lasted so long is they're cheap. Because they do the show in Sacramento, and then they play the show uh -huh. in, in the Bay Area, and so they get two for the price of one. They don't make a huge uh -huh. fortune doing it, you know? Uh -huh. And to a company like Cumulus, who owns KGO, who is in the throes of bankruptcy. <laughs> really, I'm serious. No They're in the throes of bankruptcy. Uh, in fact, they are doing so badly that they got thrown off the stock exchange. <laughs> they got delisted wow. from the stock they even exchange. Let me, they even let me go by once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Now, we have to remember, folks, and, and, you know, we're talking about the Bay Area, and a lot of people don't know what we're talking about, so let me, let me inform you of something. We're talking about a radio station, KGO, which at one time, for 35 years, years was the number one station in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, they changed the way in which they rated radio stations. They used to just have people fill out books, but then they came out with a thing called the People Meter. And all of a sudden, they found out that, well, maybe KGO wasn't as popular as they thought. And so one thing led to another, and they were doing very badly. And they finally got sold to Cumulus, who it turns out bought way too many radio stations and could, they couldn't afford on and on and on. I mean, one problem after another. And KGO is now a okay. piece of shit radio station. Oh, it's horrible. It's absolutely the one thing they had that left that we enjoyed is gone now. So, it, it, right, it, so it, it's, uh, you know, it's like that. It reminds me of that last episode of the Mary Tyler Moore show where a new guy takes over the station. And this, he wants to improve it, so he fires everyone except Ted Baxter. Well, I'll tell you what. He, he just keeps yeah. the, the one troublemaker stays. <laughs> yeah, he's the one that gets to stay. You know what? You know yeah, what? What but, happened though um, is, is that I uh, uh, I had an, a, a big war going on with KGO because KGO uh -huh. was the most popular station, supposedly according to the old rating system, the most popular yeah, radio well. station in the Bay Area. Okay. And so if you were a talent, you wanted to, you know, you wanted to promote your movie or your book or whatever on KGO. Uh -huh. And KGO said uh, that they could, they had to do KGO first, you know. And I didn't mind yeah. that. I, I, I don't mind having somebody second because I'm a better interviewer than anybody they had over at KGO. So I could get yeah, more right. out of that guest than they ever could. So sure, have at it first. I don't care if you want to be petty about it. There was only one problem with that philosophy. A lot of these people came into San Francisco for one day. Uh, and so in order to do my show, they would have to do it before KGO because I was a morning uh, show. Yeah, that's right. And in that's the right. morning, yeah, KGO yeah. only ran news. So uh, consequently, there were a lot of guests I couldn't get unless they were staying overnight so I could get them second because they would put oh this, this rule in place, which I thought about getting a couple of lawyers and suing the shit out of them because that's re really restraint of trade. Uh, you know, and there was no, there was no reason behind it. I mean, I do my interview, you do your interview, do yours better than I do mine. That's all I'm saying. I don't mind if I'm second. I don't mind if you want to put the people up in a hotel overnight so they can do my show in the morning and do there you, you first. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sweet? But they, they, they wouldn't <laughs> do that. So for years I had to deal with that, you know. Well, gee, we can't do it. Otherwise, we can't do KGO. And they would also, they would like, if they did me first, they would ban them from KGO forever. Oh, God. Oh, God. So a lot of kids on the playground. Yeah. You play with him, you can't play with me. So, so basically, one of the reasons I became a big interviewer of comedians was because I created a, a showcase where really a comedian would do better in getting an audience to their shows doing my show than being on KGO. Yeah. Okay. No, you would you would get us a following when you plug a show on your show. It would sell out. It yeah, amazing. 
But you know, I fought that for years with KGO, so I'm not I'm not sad that they're you know <laughs> that they're. I'm sad for Brian. I hope he finds another gig because we enjoyed listening to him. He was like the only thing that we really enjoyed. Yeah, I don't know. I'm never. I'm never. Believe it or not, I've never heard Brian do radio. Uh, I, I know he was very good. He was very good. He's no Alex Bennett, of course, but he was very good. Yeah, but he was a mediocre comic, so I'm glad radio worked for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, radio seemed to be his forte, so his Fabian forte. So. Yeah, but the problem is, by the way, the clinking the people here is my ice in my soda. He's, his teeth. He's getting them out of the glass. <laughs> yeah, I gotta put them in my mouth. <laughs> Come on, Grandpa. Vote. Got to get you out to vote for Taft. <laughs> no, so anyway, I mean, I really was, uh, 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 that that was a big problem for me. But anyway, so now yeah. KGO uh, is, is taking all these shows, they're filling the rest of their day, the people they're getting rid of, they're filling those slots with people from other towns. That's right. You know. It, Brian's it, it, replaced it, with Dr. It, Drew episodes. Now, so you know, I don't know how much they were paying, I, I don't know how much they were paying Brian Copeland, but in this day and age, it probably wasn't a hell of a lot, Okay. I don't think he was buying a big house on the hill. No, uh, no. I, they weren't paying him a ton of money. And no, uh, no, yet, yet paid, whatever that non, non-ton of money is, was more than it would cost them to take a show that they're doing in L.A. and play it in San Francisco. Exactly. And that's what's happening oh, all over the place to broadcasting and to radio. And, and you know, in uh-huh. a way, that's what's killing radio. And radio in a few killing years dead. is going to be completely dead. I mean... Yeah. You, you know, I, I, podcasts are the wave of the future. Well, they're the wave of the future, but they're a limited wave. Um, yeah, you true. know, because there are thousands of them. I mean, when I go on and it's I try many. to get an audience, I'm competing with thousands of other people, and I got to tell you, I know, I know. to the everybody, people, everybody, my landlord has one. It's time to the raise the rent podcast. So, yeah, so, but the uh, thing is, how, uh, how old is, is your is is that person? Yeah. Yeah, how old? How old are they? Are they young or old? Wait, who? The, the, you said the person you said who listens to lots of podcasts. Oh no, I just I said my landlord has one now. Everybody's got. Oh, one I again. see. I, okay, the, because the point I is, raise the rent again. You call us up and tell us why you shouldn't be raised. Yeah, but no, the, um, but the, I, well, the, I had a good one and nobody was listening. I interviewed Robin and the Winter Brothers and Tom Drees and a whole bunch of people, and I couldn't get people to really tune in, so I just stopped. But. Uh, you know, because everybody's got one. I don't know. You know there, there you go. Uh, listen, when Gilbert Godfrey get on the air, when Gilbert Godfrey asks me, uh, "Yeah, I know I got a lot of people listening to my podcast, but how do I make money out of it?" You know, there's a problem with podcasts. You know. Yeah, I think. Well, I figured he'd be breaking it in because everybody likes Gilbert. No, I told him. I told him, and and quite rightly so that that what he had to do was not expect that he was going to make money off the podcast it directly, but that he was going to get sure. gigs as a result of the podcast, and that he was Plus going to be gigs, able, put product. And, and he was able to up his price and so on and so forth because yeah. of the popularity of the podcast. But the podcast itself, there's no money in that. I mean, uh, yeah. when I first started doing it, I didn't say to myself, well, we're going to start making the big bucks. I just said I'm going to do this because yeah. – my career is almost at an end, and I just want to keep doing something, <laughs> you know. You and go. and keep every busy. year, and every year that I do it, the audience diminishes, you know. I mean, uh-huh. or I don't know. It, sometimes it gets larger in certain ways and smaller in other ways. Like my website uh-huh. doesn't get visited as much, but the amount uh-huh. of people that watch it on Facebook keeps getting better and better, you know. So there you go. I don't, uh, you know. It's just it's just a very frustrating. Thing so to it say, is. But, but but radio is not going to exist, uh, you know, uh, except uh, for as a, a source of free music. Yeah, I'd say uh, nobody really cares about the talk shows except an older audience, and they're all dying. Yeah, you they're know, all dying off. So there you go. They yeah, got to move to Florida to hear a talk show. So it's time for, and, and my veins hurt. You know, I mean, I have a friend of mine who's a, a consultant, a broadcast consultant. Well, I got to say he was a broadcast consultant because that job category hardly exists uh-huh. any longer. These were people who used to uh-huh. go to radio stations and give them advice on how to do a better program and uh, how yeah. to, how to you know, how to position themselves. And he would help them get ratings and so on. But yeah. today, consultants are nobody pays for a consultant. But he said to me, no. I said to him, you know, I said, I'd love to be working radio again. He says, what radio? 
you know. What were he said, well, yeah, it's I just, want to get into more it's, code again. So it's yeah, just, so. it's, it, there isn't a business there it's anymore, over. you know. It's over. Everybody's just it's trying to see how, everything. how cheaply they can run a station. Uh, uh-huh. You know, it was funny when Ooh, I first, first yeah. when I was looking for work in San Francisco, one of the places that I got a job for like six weeks was uh, at uh, the station, I think, that Armstrong and Getty wound up at from Sacramento. Uh-huh. Uh, and um, I, 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 I'm trying to remember what, what call letters. I think it was K-N-E-W. And uh-huh. um, uh, when I went to work there, uh, I hadn't done radio in a while. I uh, had finished my time at Live 105, and then I went to working out of Sacramento for a company doing internet broadcasting which again another reason i should be in the hall of fame yeah. uh because we were the first ones to ever do a regular have a regular tv network and with tv shows on the internet okay and this was yeah. in uh when was it 1998 i think it was uh-huh. yeah. so anyway um uh I then went back to radio. I finally got myself a job uh, because a friend of mine, an old boss of mine, was now running a station in San Francisco, and it was KNEW, and it was part of Clear Channel, which later became iHeartRadio. And they uh, they had all their radio stations in the cluster, like eight radio stations, all in the same building. Uh, you know, They call the thing a cluster. I call it a cluster fuck. Because, you know, because what I was used to doing, call me old fashioned, what I was used to doing is I would go over to uh, Live 105 and we'd do our show and we'd beat our brains out to beat the brains out of the competition, right? The competition was your enemy, right? Yeah. (laughs) Kill them. Now now you're in the same building with your competitor. (laughs) And it's ridiculous. (laughs) It's ridiculous. I'm doing my show. Next to me was Jim Lang doing his show on KBL, I think, or something like that, uh-huh. <laughs> right? And during the breaks, during our breaks, we'd meet in the hallway because uh, uh, J- Jim had to have a, have a cigarette, and, and we would talk politics. I loved Jim. He was a great guy. Uh, uh-huh. but, but, you know, that's what can- happened to radio. We all wound up in the same building. There's no competition, you know, and in yeah, fact, in some markets, they say to a guy, if you're a program director of, say, a music station that plays a certain kind of music, and they have another station uh-huh. in that cluster that plays the same kind of music, and it's the uh-huh. p- the dominant station, they will tell you, <laughs> we want you to lose to them. In other words, we oh, don't wow. want... <laughs> we, <in> the match. <laughs> we don't want you to succeed because we have wow. a cash take cow a in this other... Yeah, take a dive. Because we have a cash yeah, cow wow. on this other radio station. <laughs> oh, that's not cool. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, so that, that's what's happened to radio. And so, uh, I, and then I, I look at my age and I say, I, I'd love to do a radio show, but the question is where and who would hire a guy as old as I am? You know, and I can still do a show. Listen to me. I'm, I can talk. You know? Oh yeah, you don't sound like an old fart or anything, and yeah. you got your wits about you, and you'd be you'd be fucking great. The only time the, they don't know if they want intelligence the, anymore. The so. only difference is now when I go on the air a lot, I talk about how lousy my health is. But then again, I remember back to San Francisco days. I did it back then. So there you go. You'd be perfect <laughs> in Miami. Oh, listen in, Gus. I feel I got the same thing. I got a pain in my token. All the old Jews in Miami would love you. You'd have a huge following. Yeah, yeah. As they say in the Himalayas, you, oh my! It would ba- get smaller every day, but still, yeah. You know, as they get it while you can. As they say in the Himalayas, oh my baking yak. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so you know, and, and and I'm sure the same's true with you with comedy. You know, they just want the young comics. My friend Bobby Slayton says he's it's getting harder and harder for him to find jobs on the road, and he's one of the best comics and most well known comics in America. Yeah, at least true. at well, least in the club. Formula, tell him you're 24, and uh, yeah, you. <laughs> but he says but, uh, they they can. It, it, I, yeah, I'm just not even looking. I don't want to. I don't want to go on the road or anything. I just like, well, he said yeah, they can get, be a farmer. <laughs> he said they can get along cheaper by not hiring him and hiring some kid. And exactly. the, and they'll still who, they'll still put, act the week before. They'll still put asses in the in the seats in the clubs because they'll pass exactly. out all exactly. those those two furs and four furs and tell you you're going to get in for free. Of course, you still got to buy the drink minimum. 
And that's yeah, where they make their bring, money yeah, anyway. Bring, bring people and blah, blah, blah. Fuck that shit, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's a young, it, it, for the most part, it is a young person's game. And I understand that. I had some good years. I did it over 40 years. And I'm still going to do it when I can. I may just get into it full force again. Maybe I just need a rest. I don't know. But right now, I just don't need to do it every night. Well, <laughs> I can I'm drive still, all the way I, into the city. And I'm still doing it, but not, not to as large an audience as I once did, you know. I do it on yeah. I do it on Facebook. Yeah, hey, that was funny, and I tweet it once in a while, like Trump. You know, but <laughs> some come up with something funny to say. Yeah, and I'm making about as much money doing that as I would at a club. So, well, you know, I mean, what you do for a living to me is is uh, I'm old. I like it here. Well, no, but on. unless you really work it, you know, there are guys I know who work it. Proops works it, right? Sure. Uh, 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 Durst works it. In other words, but oh, he's a hustler, yeah. when he I, get, I don't have the hustling when he get, get uh, I call him about once every three weeks, right? And we do a a video call, and I oh, and uh, I can see there's a there's a uh, a calendar right in back of him with all the things written into the calendar, and he'll go look at it occasionally uh, and say, "Let's say I'm not playing them, but I'm playing then." He get first thing in the morning. He gets up. He starts working it. You know, yep, well, sure. you're, you're not willing to do that. I think you're just getting to the point where you go, I don't got, I don't have time for that. No, nah, well, I do, I do half of that. I wake up. I, I just don't <laughs> work it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm sure Why Pro bother? Proops does the same thing. You know, he's out, he pushes the book, and he pushes the name, yeah. and he, he's on, he's writing tweets like crazy, you know. and exactly. uh, show uh, business, it, show business. Yeah, and if you're willing to do it, uh, do, do work that hard, fine. Uh, but I'm not. <laughs> I never was. I had. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bub still works because he's got a couple of friends who hire him to open for him. But if he had to rely on the internet, he doesn't even have. Uh, he only has dial up. You know. So. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, you think? Well, he's got to spend money on other things. You think hookers are free? Go on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, hookers. Yeah. He also had the letter of the Letterman. Uh, those two Letterman, even though they're like twenty years apart, those two Letterman appearances don't hurt either. So he has a little TV cred, even though the shows extinct now. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. But and he'll work. He'll always work or be an opener or whatever. So that's yeah. good. But, well, yeah, I, bet, so and I, I would like that too, but I'm not no, willing to chase it. Anymore. You're not you're, you're, exactly, and that's that's the reason you're not. So big deal. Big deal. Yeah, big deal. I don't. I don't care if I if I became famous like tomorrow. What I was chasing for like forty years, I wouldn't even want. I like the money, but no, I don't want. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Well, the first thing will happen is is some too. woman will come uh, forward and say that you harassed her and that you sexually <laughs> abused her. <laughs> no, and I'll be finished before I do my first <laughs> old comedian. You know, this on HBO. this year the pr people who won uh, the best actor uh, for movies and best actor for TV at the Golden Globes uh, for comedy. Both of them have now been accused simply because they appeared at the Golden Globes and they were wearing a Time's Up button and somebody decided oh, to write, God. well, he he did this to me and he she did that. Yeah, I, I'm so sick of it. Anyway, at least... Oh, God. Uh, I hear uh, Good King Friday the 13th is coming forward now accusing Mr. Rogers of sticking his hand up his ass. <laughs> that's another, good, thing the old, good thing the old pervert is dead. Uh, yeah. And with that, we will call this whole thing... Uh, to a close. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen Pearl. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Alex. Always a pleasure. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And hello, everybody. Well, that was Stephen Pearl. But we uh, we took a vote, and you said you wanted to hear the interview, and then everybody went away and didn't listen to the interview. So you know, uh, you people can't be satisfied. That's what I keep saying to the women in my life, all my life. But anyway, you can't be satisfied. Get it? It's a joke. It's a joke. So anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, let me open up the Skype lines. You know, we do the citizen panel and the citizen people call. And um, let's see if we got some tonight. Let me, uh, let me get rid of some of these that were backed up on the page here. Uh... Uh, but uh, if you want to call us, you know, you can use Skype. If you don't know how to call us using Skype, go over to gabnet.net, and on the right-hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on how to do it, including a nifty little button that once you've got Skype, all you have to do is click on the button, and uh, 
uh, when you click on the button, it, uh, it, it calls us. So, you know, uh, you just go in, you turn on Skype, right? You go to Skype and you, and you, you turn it on. And then you go over to that page, and you put yourself online. Then you go over to that page, uh, gabnet.net, hit the uh, Skype uh, logo with the word call there on the right-hand side of the page. And it'll, it'll dial right up here, and we'll, we'll answer the phone. You know, we'll answer the Skype. See how old-fashioned I am? We'll answer the phone. We'll answer the telephone. And, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, it'll be lots of fun. Hey! Oh, you know, this is, this is, this is new. I've never noticed this. Uh, this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our oldest callers. Well, I mean, not, don't mean an age. Hey. Oh, hold on. Yeah. He's, hold he's on. Right up here and we'll, we'll answer the phone, you know, we'll answer uh, the Skype. I've been listening to the wonderful playback of... The telephone. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm, and, uh, I'm trying know, to, uh... Lots of hey. Uh, oh, you know, this is, this is, this is uh, new. I've never noticed this. Uh, this is the ladies and gentlemen. Just, one of just, our just, uh, just, you've got, I mean, you've got, uh, you've got, you're listening to us on the, on the. Internet. I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to turn off. Uh, I'm trying to turn off Safari. Here, let me quit Safari. Yeah. Ah. Uh, there you go. It quit. Ah. Uh, it quit. Uh, 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 sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Mike, you, you didn't call us right. You called us wrong. Mike is trying to call, and he's doing it wrong. So, uh. Let me yeah. see here. Hold on a second. I've got to turn this off. Uh, let me, I should have. I should have closed. Him. I should have closed Safari before I yeah. tried uh, yeah. Skype. I Everybody, thought I could do. So, I thought I could do both simultaneously. Yeah. I'm actually. I'm actually using my brand new uh, MacBook Air that oh, I just got oh, really? last night. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Uh, hey, there is something wrong. Hold on a second. Let me go to this other call for a second and just tell him how he's fucking up. Uh, Mike, you're calling using an existing conference group. No, I mean, well, the same well I, I can't take you on this. I just can't take you. I got to get back to talking to our uh, our people here. You know, I mean, I just uh, and wait a minute. I've got the same problem. Listen, uh, let me hang up. Uh, Tom, uh, wait a minute. Tom, Tom, you there? Oh, hold on a second. Resume call. Tom, let me call you back. I've got to kill Skype and re redo it. Okay? Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, let me see here. Hang up on <laughs> Phil Meyer, and then let me hang up on Skype. Let me uh, quit Skype. Okay, quit. All right. Now let's try it again. Let's try opening it up here and seeing what, um, what uh, is going to happen. There we go. All right. Now, if people would start calling me, I think it should work now. We had a slight problem in people trying to get in here. Uh, just uh, call me. All right. It's, it's ready to go. Now, I don't know what happened, and I don't know why it happened, but every now and then Skype does that where I have a hard time uh, bringing people online. Uh, and... Uh, so um, uh, I'm sorry if you were there. So Phil, you can call. Scott, you can call. Uh, let me see here. Who else tried to call? Mike, you can call. Tom Yamaguchi, you can call. Uh, and that should, uh, that should be fine. Well, and now they're not calling. So I'm just sitting here all by myself. Okay. Here comes Scott Boddicker. All right. There's Scott. Hi, Scott. How are you? Now let's see if somebody else calls if I can actually add them to the group. Or that I'm going to have to do yeah, it. Yeah, it was hard. different. It was odd. Something was weird. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was very, know. very weird. Um, but we have to wait till the next person calls to see if I have to do it the hard way or whether I can do it the old way. Uh, I, I just want to apologize. I left early last night. My wife needed me to check a yeah. noise in the attic above the bedroom. So. Okay, here comes Phil. Yeah, now it's working okay. Now it's yeah. working okay. I had to re reboot Skype. Ah, uh, yes, Skype. What a wonderful, wonderful thing it is. Hello. Hello, Phil. There. Hey, but, good evening. And, and, and you, know, you know, who is, is Scott starting to look like? He looks like... Jesus. You know who he looks like? He looks like... Um, um, uh, who was the guy who uh, had the gunpowder plot in England? Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know, they may have the masks of him. Um, oh. Uh, they, they have uh, a day named after him. The guy? The Vice, guy Fawkes Day. 
Guy Fox. Fox. You look like Guy Fox. I don't know what he looks like. It's well, haven't you like seen those? Ever, haven't yeah. you seen those masks they have? Yeah. Yeah. You look like Guy Fox. You got the. You got the hair is very Jesus old English. Look. No, it's old English. Old yeah. English. Well, I'm I'm going for like uh, old West, like you said the one time, or even even uh, uh, was it Kurt Kurt Russell, the young. Yeah. When he plays his Western characters. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 let me see here. Uh, hey, Alex, was use right thing a call? Oh, well, says Mike. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, Mike? Is that English? Yeah. He's been taking lessons oh, from wait, Trump. Wait. Now we're having problems with Tommy Yamaguchi. So let me see if I can call him. Uh, 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 well, I have to hang up on him and then I have to uh, call him. All right. Uh, oh, I see what the problem is. He's not in our contacts. Okay. Oh, he's got a new machine, he he's said. He's got a new machine. Oh, so, I didn't know that happened. It, it yeah, uh, let me see up. here. So, Tom, uh, I can call him, though. Let me let me just uh, call him. Let me also add uh, Jeff to our group. Here, here I'm calling I'm calling Tom. I had to call you, Tom, because you didn't, uh, you didn't uh, ask to be made a contact, and you've got a new machine. Uh. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know. That's fine. Don't worry about it. No problem. Okay. We've got a we got a good little crew here going for us. Uh, we've got uh, Phil and we've got uh, Tom Yamaguchi, who we're always happy when he calls, and of course Scott Boddicker, who uh, is looking, as I say, like Guy Fox, uh, and uh, he's not wearing a Guy Fox mask. No, that's really Scott Boddicker. Look straight forward, Scott, so they can see what I mean. See, isn't that Guy Fox? <laughs> I take my glasses off. Yeah. I don't know who Guy Fox is. Yeah, the mustache is the mustache is wrong. Oh, I'd say okay, but if you didn't oh. if you didn't have the mustache uh, or you had a full no, beard, a then you mustache. then you'd look like Christ. Oh, okay. Then you'd look oh, like yeah, Christ. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And folks, that ain't, that ain't gonna happen, Tom. <laughs> not, not enough not enough days in my life left to get something like that going. What, 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 what did he say you look like? What'd you say, Tom? I said you need a handlebar mustache to do be Guy Fox. Oh, I see. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And hello uh, to Jeff, of course. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 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 Tom has a new uh, camera. Nobody's watching tonight. Last night, we had just a huge viewing audience. And tonight, it's like, you know, I think there are two crickets and a frog out there tonight. <laughs> That's because we were talking about tech. Oh, because we were talking mm -hmm. about tech last night? Hey, you told me you were killing them off. You were killing them off. Yeah, you start going true. into some of that tech talk stuff, and you get it gets really dull. We don't want to know about your camera. Yeah, well, maybe we want to know about Tom's computer. Yes, we would, because a lot of people buy new computers. So what, what, did, you, what kind did you get? I've got a MacBook Air. MacBook Air. Okay, you yeah, like, you my, like other, it? my other MacBook was... It, Gave to be eight years old, and it really is wearing out and needed replacing. So yeah, so I spent last night. <laughs> well, the camera is better. That's for damn sure. Yeah, the camera's better. The only yeah. problem yeah. is, is that you've got to adjust it so that it doesn't adjust to the light. That you you get it so it just uh, it, it doesn't automatically do exposure because when you move back and forth out of the backlight, it tends yeah, to there's, there's a light behind. Yeah, you. it yes, goes so. on. You know, but yeah, you can you can you, you can adjust you can adjust that actually. Yeah. I, I believe with the new, well, we'll see. <laughs> new MacBook the new Air. Um, let's just hope now that uh, that uh, Apple stays in business. Uh, I, I don't think they got a problem. <laughs> I think they got a problem. I think they got yeah. a big problem. Uh, I oh, yeah. I, I mean, think the iPhone X uh, failing uh, is a big fail for them. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a failure. I I still think it was a limited production. No, that wasn't what it was intended. That wasn't what it was intended to be, Phil. It was intended to be an. It was intended to be. A, it was a, intended to be a new line of high end iPhones. Uh, it was supposed to be a celebration of ten years no, of iPhones. No, that's what they said as an excuse. But it was meant to be a perm. It's not like you couldn't get as many as you wanted to buy. Let me put it that way. Yeah, but a limited they, edition outside. indicates they made a thousand of them and then they threw the mold away. Well, I thought that's what they were supposed You're to. You're just be. saying that because you you were a sucker and got one. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. So now it recognizes your face. And Siri says, you're still ugly. Yeah. But it likes me. Huh? It likes me. It likes you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I, I have a lot of people who like me. At least that's what my Facebook page says. Yeah, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. And it doesn't cost you a thousand dollars. To thy own yeah. self be true. <laughs> yeah. What? What? What did you? What were you going to say, Tom? I have a confession. Yeah. I was the one that was doing the thumbs up on the uh, for the Stephen Pearl interview. Uh, uh for, no, that it was supposed to be thumbs up if you wanted to hear me. Right. And yeah. Thumbs, oh no, it oh, was thumbs. a smiley face for to for you to do a monologue. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And thumbs, thumbs up, up for, for the, for the yeah. Stephen Pearl. And, and you just kept clicking over and over and over again. <laughs> Because okay. I went to your stupid. And, and that's why we only have, what, 11 people or something watching or something? I, I, I don't <laughs> understand that because it never goes above 20. And then when I sign off, it says 400 people watch the show. That's not right. And no. So I, I can't figure out what that's all about. I have no idea. But it's. They tune in, they hear it's the show, and they get off. Yeah, they listen for two seconds, right? You know. But. Uh, who cares? It adds to the numbers. It makes me look good when you look at the page and it says, you know, 400 and some odd people watched it or something. Uh, of course, it'll help that, with all your advertisers. Uh, of course. I'm, uh, you know, it, yeah, it'll help with the advertising. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be able to get more of those big time name guests on the show. I think I can get Meryl Streep with those kind of numbers. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get Armstrong and Getty on. Yeah. <laughs> I loved hearing hearing that. You you know, you know, you're talking about yeah you know, about KNEW. Armstrong and Getty are a team that have been in the Bay Area since I left, and they have they yet to ever get show. they've yet to get numbers at all. I mean, they, they took over your show. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. time. Well, they didn't take over my show. I had my, that show for your six time, weeks. Your time slot. Yeah, my time slot. And they put them in there because they were from Sacramento, and they got them for free. All right. And those guys have been on. For something like, well, it's got to be 20 years, almost 20 years now. It and was they 2003. Have, yeah, and they have never. Two, no, it was earlier than that. It 2003. Well, you're it right. It was the you're March right. of 2003. It was right, right after the week, weekend when we had mm. this huge uh, demonstration, a uh, second demonstration against the coming uh, uh, Iraq war. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, anyway, and, and so, I came on yeah. and I came, came in and turned on and these guys said, say, you know, what a bunch of idiots uh, I, you know, I am, and the other people were for marching the streets against the war in, in, in Iraq. And uh, I was really, really well, upset. Those guys have been on for 15 years, at least maybe yeah, more 16 years. years and never gotten decent ratings never now how come i could get decent ratings in that town and i'm not there anymore you know i don't understand that this doesn't make any sense how do these guys stay on the air in san francisco oh they're not in san francisco they're in yeah. they're in sacramento aren't your ratings the tops with uh, 18 to 35 male it was large it was a wider group than that actually Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was like like chair, eighteen, to, eight, chair, eighteen, we eighteen, Camel. eighteen to forty nine. Uh, you, you had a six share when we were at Camel, and uh, oh no, uh, it was uh, eighteen yeah. to thirty five. That was six share. I can't remember what the numbers were in San Francisco. I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got the highest numbers they had ever gotten at KML in the morning. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, all I'm saying is, I don't understand how people who have failed continuously for. Uh, 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 15, 16 years are still on the air. They fired everybody at that fucking radio station, KGO, and they left them on in the morning. Honestly, until Tom said that they uh, angered him, I always thought that they were kind of wishy-washy and didn't anger anybody. But and now I understand, you know, what Tom said, and you know, I respect that. But uh, you know, I thought that they were just kind of well. They were they were also trying to uh, uh, appease their masters, which at that time was Clear Channel. It's now called uh, iHeart Radio. Yeah. Uh, and Clear Channel was headed up by a guy, of the talk division, who believed the talk should just be right wing. He came mm -hmm. into town. The reason I wasn't there any longer, I did about six weeks because my, uh, the general manager, Ed Cramp, is a good friend of mine. He said, would you do me a favor and just come in? We don't have anything in the morning. Just do something. He said, I can't promise you a job. We don't know what we're going to do there. 
And this guy came in, I can't remember his name now, Tom, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, he was the head of All Talk Programming. And he heard me, and he looked over at, uh, at Krampf and said, when he heard my politics, he's kidding, right? And they said, no, he's to the left. And he says, oh, and the next day I was gone. You know, so I mean, it, it, that was a time where cl it, he defined talk radio as as right wing politics. That's how he right. defined talk radio. Yeah, well, it was kind of at, at that time. Yeah. You know, if you looked at the uh, at the landscape, uh, there were very few uh, liberal talk radio. Now, now in in deference to him, or, or or well, I'll tell you why he did it. He. Uh, this, I'm trying to remember his name now. God, I, I wish I could remember. I sh usually remember the name of people I hate. Um, <laughs> this guy, um, suddenly he re they bought up a whole bunch of radio stations. You know, I mean, uh, they went on this big buying spree and had 1,100 radio stations from coast to coast. Well, when you have 1,100 radio stations, only some of them do well. The rest are turkeys, Right. So they had a bunch of turkey radio stations. He said, what should I do with it? And that's about the time Air America went on the air, which was a stupid idea because what they were trying to do was sell a 24-7 network mm -hmm. of left-wing talk rather than individual shows. Say you could buy Randy Rhodes or you could buy so-and-so. Mm -hmm. No, they, they sold it as a whole package. And so... Uh, my friend Ed Cramp again, they had nothing to put in the up on the station in, uh, in Portland. So they threw this thing up on there. And Air America was number one immediately. Well, of course, it's Portland. <laughs> Say no <laughs> more, right? Yeah. So, so this guy goes, well, let's dump Air America on every lousy radio station we have that has a lousy signal and can't get ratings. And they threw them <laughs> on all these stations across the country. So left-wing radio had a place that uh, uh, Clear Channel, now iHeartRadio, could say, oh, look, see, we're doing that too. But they were on stations that barely had a signal. And they mm. were failing all over the country. That's why Air America finally died. They died of nobody listening. Uh, so uh, uh, that, that was the story of this particular guy. And he's the guy who pretty much came in one day, and I think it was like within the week I was out of there. Uh, so, yeah. Al Jazeera bought Air America. No, they didn't. They never bought anything. Uh, who? Well, didn't they, uh, uh, Gore sell huh? Air America? Didn't he own no, it? No. Oh, what did he own? Hmm? Oh. What's, what, what, uh, uh, left? Well, that was a, that was a cable TV channel. What do you I'm trying to remember? Uh, no. Yeah. Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera. That was called Air America? No. Yeah. No. No. Aramid. No, it started out. It started out uh, allowing young people to do um, uh, their own videos. Al, yeah. do you remember the name of the? Oh, I, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, well, and what was it called? It wasn't Al Jazeera at the time. It was something no, else. No, it was it but I guess not. I mean, no, it wasn't Air America. There were a couple of things that were wrong with Air America. I wrote an article for Hustler, huge article, three thousand words. It's a lot of article, uh, which was called the life, death, and rebirth of. Uh, of uh, Air America, and I think the rebirth, I can't remember what the last part of that was. And it was all about the history of Air America. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started out as an idea, uh, who's this guy who's on, oh God, I know him, my mind is such a blank, a left-wing talk show host who had a nice following. And um, I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, he was on Sirius, as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, I know who you're talking uh, about. You, you know, he was on Chief. Late Night. I don't think he's there anymore, but he was on Late Night. Um, and uh, uh, there were these people in Chicago named the Drobneys. They were very wealthy. And they said, we, uh, Mike, uh, Mike. Oh, Mike Malloy. Mike Malloy. Yeah. And they, they, they liked him. And they said, you know what we want to do for Mike Malloy? Uh, and they called Mike Malloy. They said, come on in. We want to buy you syndication. We want to buy you stations and things like that, you know. And they came up with this idea of a network of left-wing talk show hosts, and Mike Malloy was going to be the anchor of the whole thing, right? Uh, one thing led to another, and the Drobneys uh, were just absolutely burning cash and getting nowhere. So they then gave the idea to somebody else. I have to go back and read the article I wrote. And eventually it fell into some other hands, 
Then by the time Air America got on the air, Mike Malloy wasn't even on it. <laughs> because they decided they were going to hire Al Franken, Randy Rhodes, uh, Mark Marin, uh, Stephanie, oh, Stephanie Ste Miller. I don't know if Stephanie Miller was there or not. No, I don't think so. Uh, uh, the Al Gore thing was current TV. Yeah, current. yeah, yeah. And that was a good idea. It was a really good idea. I, I love that channel. Anyway, let me finish what I was saying. So uh, the uh, 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 they decided they would go on with this network. And what they did is they called it Air America. Now, that sounds like a great name, doesn't it? I mean, come on. It's a, it's a, it says you've got a... CIA air, airline. Well, well, the problem with it was... <laughs> it sounds like a CIA thing, doesn't that's it? That's exactly the problem. The they, nobody did their homework. <laughs> but the name was the name that the CIA used yeah. for their covert airline in Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was Air America. And so that name was very sullied. And they so they started off on a b wrong footing to begin with. And um, I wanted to be on Air America. Uh, I was, uh, uh, because I was looking for a lot of work at that time. I didn't have Sirius XM and I didn't have uh, anything. I was here in New York looking for work. So I went out to lunch with the guy who was, um, who was, um, uh, running the place, programming it, very nice guy who liked my work and said, I want you in there. And within a couple of weeks, he was no longer the program director. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and, and what's funny, it's this, this same guy who wanted to hire me to go to work at XM before it merged with Sirius to handle the talk programming because he was the head of talk programming. He wanted me to do something in talk pro or in comedy programming. That was it. And uh, he got fired from there before he could hire me. So, you know, I, I, I couldn't catch cold. Finally, I got the job at Sirius XM and it didn't matter. But I saw up close the running of this thing and it was just a clusterfuck from the very beginning. And I, so, I'd have to go back and read the article again, but there were things like taking money and spending it in the wrong places and stealing money from the company by some people and uh you know one thing and another and it was it was, it was just a pathetic story and so of course eventually air america died and everybody said see left-wing radio doesn't work no it doesn't work in the hands of incompetent people you know and these these were incompetent people who were just you know they thought they thought for instance if you hire somebody uh like uh, al franken that he could necessarily do a good radio program. And he did a horrific radio program, just horrific. Uh, uh, Mark Marin, uh, not really good at doing a talk show. Terrible. He went on and started doing podcasts, and he got better at it, but at that time he was terrible. The only person they had that was any kind of a professional, a tried-and-true professional, was Randy Rhodes, and they kept ignoring her. You know, they were getting all the press for Al Franken. Uh, and it was, it was, it was, the whole thing was a clusterfuck. And so that was the death of what we would call liberal radio in America. Although I can't say it was ever born, so I don't know if it could die. <laughs> you know. I don't know if any of you people out there found that interesting. I wish I had the article here because there are a lot of the facts that I forgot. Uh, but there are. There I were, find interesting is every time you have a shot at a job, the guy gets fired. Yeah, it's true. Well, isn't I, it? I, well no, wait a minute. I had one better case. One better case was the guy you knew who would, wanted to talk to me about working back in San Francisco again, and he died. Right, fifty-nine he, years old. How's he? You know. Yeah, he was. He should have been in good health. You know what I should do? The minute anybody has any kind of inkling of hiring me, I should say, well, let me warn you first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, everybody's ever wanted to hire me gets fired or they die, you know. Uh, and, yeah. Good motivation. Huh? Ooh. Yeah. That's lousy motivation. Yeah, it's lousy this motivation. Guy, when he came to San Francisco, he cleaned house at the uh, station he was at. Nobody yeah. liked him. Uh, I guess he had a... Uh, he had a uh, a following of people that didn't like him. Well, this guy was the program director for Howard Stern at right. WA. At, where was it? Uh, WABC uh, in New York. NBC. At WNBC in New York. And he's the one that was known as uh, something breath or whatever in the movie. Pig, pig face. Pig face. Pig, pig vomit. Pig vomit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 
And uh, I work for his father at WMCA in New York. So I figured it'd be fun to work. I knew for his the, father. Fun to I work. Fun for my to work high school newspaper. You know, and he, and he and he and you said he was definitely Earl interested in he was des- definitely interested in talking to me, and so we were kind of arranging for us to kind of get together and talk, and then all of a sudden I read he's dead. Yeah, well, he he was a PD in in uh, Detroit. My friend Barry and he were very good friends. Yeah, and this Barry put me together with him, you know, just as a social thing, and you know we were about to get together, and the guy dies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, the story of my career. You know, uh, always a bridesmaid. Yeah. Always a bridesmaid. You know, <laughs> uh, forced to wear a dress. Anyway, isn't anybody else going to call tonight? We haven't heard from Rob this week. Who else have we not heard from? Well, Mike now is not calling because he thinks he can't get in. But, Mike, you could get in because it's very simple now. When we had the problem earlier, it was because I couldn't put you on because it didn't say add contact when we got a new caller. So I just simply rebooted my Skype. And guess what? We're doing this, so if you want to call, and if anybody else would like to call, I would love to hear from you, too. There's hardly anybody calling and hardly anybody listening, and uh, so what am I doing here? Well, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, I um, can I can I read you something here? This is, this is kind of, oh, let me see. Oh, that was fast. Who was that that tried to call? Just went, and then went off. I don't know. Um, Garrison Keeler, you know what happened with him? Yes. He, he got caught up in this uh, Me Too uh, McCarthyite uh, clusterfuck that's been going on. Uh, and, and in a way, um, I feel a little sorry for Garrison Keeler because he really, I believe his story, okay? Uh, maybe I just want to believe it. And I do, I'm not I'm not a big fan of uh, of Garrison Keillor, so you know uh, there's no reason for me to be defending him. But let me read you this a little bit of this. Um, Garrison Keillor, the former host of the Minnesota Public Radio's A Prairie Home Companion, answered allegations of sexual impropriety after NPR, that's Minnesota Public Radio, severed ties with Keillor back in November and released new details about the allegations against him. NPR said in a statement that Keeler was accused by a woman who worked on his Prairie Home Companion radio show of dozens of sexually inappropriate incidents over the years, including, now you get this, requests for sexual contact. Contact? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, is a request for sexual contact necessarily harassment? Or I, it, I think it's very polite to ask. It used to be called dating, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, and explicit sexual communications and touching, okay? You can't uh, touch. NPR said the woman whom it has not identified, see, that's the part that I find egregious, detailed the allegations in a 12-page letter that included excerpts of emails and written messages. Keeler responded to the latest details, and, and what I love is the punchline on this. To the latest details in a statement provided the Star Tribune, Tribune writing, how to respond to so many untruths in a short space. The woman who complained was a friend, had been hired as a freelance researcher, an employee of mine, not NPR's, working a job that she did from her home by email. I hardly ever saw her in the office. Our friendship continued in frequent emails about our kids and travel and family things that continued to my last show and beyond. She signed her emails, I love you, and she asked if her daughter could be hired to work there and so forth. She attended the last show in L.A. She still features a Prairie Home Companion prominently on her Facebook page. Now here comes the best one. Keeler's statement adds, Her complaint was drawn up by her attorney, a highly selective and imaginative piece of work. Uh, It never spoke to me or the complaint. If I'm guilty of harassment, then every employee who stole a pencil is guilty of embezzlement. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) That's a great line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do Do you believe Keeler? Um, 
It's he said, she said, right? I guess he believes in himself. Well, you know, I mean, if, if, if he basically says we never really had that much FaceTime. We had emails back and forth, and she did all yeah. her work from home. And then if she was being so abused by Keeler, why in the world would she want her daughter to be hired yeah. by him? Yeah. It's crazy. I don't yeah. know. Now, I'd like to say that Keeler's career is ruined, but I think he retired about a year ago, didn't he, or something? Yeah. So, I mean, well, we're going to ruin your retirement. <laughs> Now, did anybody see the uh, the uh, sentencing today of what's his name, Larry Nasser? One hundred and seventy-five to forty uh, to seventy-five years. Forty to one hundred seventy-five years. 40, yeah, yeah, he can get out in 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 a hundred for good behavior. Like Three hundred. <laughs> can he get out in twenty with good behavior? Uh, I I don't know. You know, um, I would imagine this is going to be appealed. Uh, but I, I want. Did anybody watch it or hear it? No. The the judge. I, I couldn't stand her. She was ter She was sitting there doing nothing but just f uh, pushing herself on the public. Oh, here's what I do, and here's what I can do, and here's how I have done it, and I'm fair, and I'm not this, and I'm not that, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, on and on and on. This guy's waiting to hear his sentence, and she's doing a PR fluff piece for the press. <laughs> I, I mean, it was just embarrassing. Just car. embarrassing. I mean, yeah, give the guy his sentence and let him go start yeah. serving. I'm never see the hey, life, Judge, buddy. I'd like to get out of here early so I can start <laughs> serving this sentence. You know, I have 175 <laughs> I years. <laughs> Come on. This is insane, really. What the hell is going on in the world? Well, Ever since Trump's got in, everything's upside down. Well, everything is upside down. Yeah, this guy's been uh, doing his diddling for a long time. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, what he did was unconscionable. But, but it was Obama's fault. But, yeah, it was Obama's fault. We know that. What did he do now? He always blamed the guy for everything. No, but it was a, it was it was it was a it was a disgusting uh, dis disgusting thing. But I I just think that what she did today was on her own level, just as disgusting in some ways, of trying to use this as some kind of a vehicle for her own self-promotion. You know, just sentence the person, say goodbye, and that's it. You know? How, yeah. How, how come, uh, you know, you know? I, I know what you're saying here. I, I just looked at a headline. How come the dreamers are targeting Schumer? Okay, wait a minute. We, we're changing the subject in midstream. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm kind of bored with uh, the, the well, child. Oh, well, the dreamers are attacking Schumer because Schumer pussied out on us. Oh, when God. he said to, to, uh, uh, to Trump, uh, we'll give you the wall. And then, the then wall of course, again? Schumer, when he found out that he wasn't very popular with that, backtracked on it and said, no, we're not going to give him the wall. And now Trump says, well, if you want me to pass a Dreamers Act, you have to give me the wall, which I think is very cruel because what you're saying is, you know, we, you've got to uh, make these uh, immigrants suffer uh, 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 because, you, because you're not going to build me my wall. Let me build my wall. And I find that just really disgusting. He's, he's trying to hold it for ransom. Yes, who had his hand up? Telling that we're not going to restart the economy and, and, unless you uh, let illegals in? This economy isn't restarted. It was restarted about two years ago. Yes, no, 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 Jeff, no, no. Did, the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, Jeff, did you have your hand up? Shut down. Yes. Uh, I, th I think that Sherm uh, is the guy who's the head guy, and nobody else knows who to complain. Yeah. I think his name is, is just a bad name. What name? I bet he's the senator of, uh, the Schumer? of the liberals. Yeah. So who else are they going to Well, I never liked Schumer. Uh, and I never liked him because, uh, and he's from the state I live in, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I d never liked him because I always found him to be a real political whore. Like, what guy isn't a political whore? But he, it was especially a political whore because I found that because... He didn't have to go to shul on Sunday. Uh, he would appear, he would, he would make all his public statements and hold his press conferences on Sunday on a dead news day. So I used to come up with a saying that I used on 
serious for years, which was it's Sunday, so it must be Schumer. You know, uh, every Sunday you could count on, and you still can, you can count on, on, on Schumer to hold a press conference. So, you yeah, have free advertising. Yeah. And then I liked Kirsten Gillibrand till she did what she did to uh, Franken. Mm -hmm. And then She's I. Hot. Huh? She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Nice ass? Is that what you're going to say, Scott? <laughs> They're gonna, Sexual harassment. Don't that worry. Be don't, yeah, <laughs> don't worry now. You could never be a congressman now. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 I just didn't like what she did to Frank, and I didn't like what the Democratic Party did to Frank, and in that they used him as a sacrificial lamb for what was going on in Alabama. Do you agree or disagree, Tom? This is something that's in your bailiwick. Well, yeah, I, I see the point um, that you know that uh, that they were trying to make it look like they were being consistent uh, yeah. when dealing with the situation with Roy Moore. Yeah, I'd say I'd say taking a gag photo with somebody is slightly less than going out with a thirteen-year-old. You know? Yeah, even though there were more things involving uh, Frank and uh, you know. Uh, you know, but still, all of them combined, not anywhere near the, the as other, bad the situation other, with uh, yeah. with uh, with Roy Moore. Well, the only other thing that came up about the only other thing that came about up about Franken was some woman who said he was t they were taking a selfie and he had his hand on her ass, and you can't tell whether he's got his hand on her ass or not. And that let that be a lesson to everybody: don't do selfies. You know. <laughs> Uh, because they can claim something. But no, nobody else really came forward with any kind of conclusive proof about Al Franken. Mm -hmm. not, not like they have for Donald Trump, who seems to be getting off scot-free in this whole deal. Stormy. <laughs> Stormy Webb. It's innocent. Oh, you, did, how did you hear the latest? Tell him where he touched Frank you, Stormy. Everywhere. Yeah. How do they need you? hear the latest from Franklin Graham? No. That, uh, that, uh, that, uh, Trump has not sinned since he's become president. He's not. He's he's no longer a sinner. He can't get it up anymore either. So you know, I heard he cheats at golf. Yeah, well, he does more than that. He's he, he basically he's he's constantly lying, you know. <laughs> and now he's going to get his chance to to, to lie to to to, uh, to Mueller. Right, right. <laughs> well, he better not lie too much Under to Earth. Mueller, or he or he can wind up in in jail. You know, I, I, how many here think there's a good shot at Trump getting hit with obstruction of justice? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I think oh, yeah. It, look, it looks pretty damn good. Yes. But who makes the decision? Well, the, the decision. To what prison he goes to. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because I. Too many Republicans, they, they're not going to. Yeah. Well, they'll, uh, <laughs> I was going to say maybe they'll give them time served. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, uh, Tom. Oh, I, I didn't have anything. Oh, else. So I, I thought you had your hand up. Here's, there. here's mm -hmm. another one for the uh, David Copperfield, I guess. Is being Boy, you just change subjects on a whim. <laughs> you know, I get bored. Uh, I know you Every get bored. Every time I said something about Trump, he gets a word. All right. Uh, well, it's the, just the newest in a in a uh, long line of uh, uh, people being accused. You know, you would think that David Copperfield would be able to hypnotize the girl. Why would he have to drug her? <laughs> oh, he's been listed now as being a yeah, uh, uh, yeah, seventeen year old. Wow, My God, uh, Brittany Lewis. This is uh, a nineteen eighty eight. I'm not surprised. Eighty eight. Oh, 88? Oh, my God. Well, how old is she? Did they say she's 88? <laughs> no, no. In 1988? Oh, 1988. I don't remember what. That's the 17-year-old? Yeah. Okay. I, in 1988, it might have been legal. <laughs> in, in 1988, she was 17, and right about now she's going through menopause. Go figure. <laughs> Isn't that waiting a little long? I mean, come on now. You know, I, Actually, Alex, you're lucky. With, with all the See, look, look, look. Too, you, they might have got you. What? 
But all the, you know, I know you were, remember you were saying you were worried back in the day, like with all the women that, that uh, No, I, I was never worried about this sort of thing. I wouldn't be worried about it today. I don't think there, I don't, except for maybe a couple of nutty women I knew. You were saying really crazy, crazy. I know of no woman that would probably make any of these claims against me because I never, never was involved in that kind of behavior, you know. See, he was a gentleman, I I am. Would you have stayed away from some of the crazy women you think, Alex? Now, what? If it day? weren't for the crazy woman, women, I wouldn't have gotten laid. Oh. You had to be crazy to have sex with me. You know. Uh, but no, I mean, it, it was, um, uh, she, um, it was, um, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of these people, it happened so long ago, they don't even remember the incident. Yeah, you scary. know, and and um, all I know is that my method of behavior was that I always never wanted anybody to feel uncomfortable around me. And so I would never make a move on a woman unless I felt she would be comfortable with it. And if she wasn't comfortable with it, I I, I would stop immediately. You oh, know? hello, darling. Are you comatose yet? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I gave her a lot of booze and hoped she'd pass, pass out with her mouth open. You know, uh, yeah. I, I, I thought about that. You know, part of my uh, uh, method of operation was preludes or champagne. You know, you, you always, you know, kind of had a. I nice never, thing. I never, I never did any of that. I never, to begin with, I wasn't a drinker, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't find me no. plying a woman with booze. And so far as drugs were concerned, most of the time, if I had them, women asked if I had any. Right. Oh, of course. You know, I didn't have you know, to like push offer. drugs on them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You offer, but that was kind of just the way it was back then. Well, yeah, there was a certain a, a, a method of conduct back in those days. That doesn't mean that you had to do it. Uh, as I say, I was, uh, I really didn't, uh, I, was, I was a good boy. I was good that way. I, I don't feel that, outside, as I say, outside of a few crazy, crazy ass women who might make the claim because they're crazy and don't remember anything, or they might even be somebody I didn't know or that I met briefly. Uh, I don't think there's a single a woman I, I have ever had a relationship with, however brief, that would say something bad about me. I mean, it might say I was a lousy fuck or something like that, but, you know, outside of that, I'd be more hurt by that than, you know. So, But I, I, I because I, I, my father always taught me that you treat, women with a great deal of respect okay and you don't treat them uh you know it, he didn't like the way women were treated in this society and he taught me that you don't treat women that way he was really an ultimate gentleman ter terribly good person you know so anyway I, it's my that's my that's my story and i'm sticking to it you know, but I do feel bad for a lot of these people who are being assailed anonymously. Uh, and how are you going to defend yourself against somebody you don't even know? You know, and and yet they've lost jobs, business, and whatever because of it. Um, now this Louis C.K. Yeah, you that he was exonerated. It's, uh, FX who had fired him from all their networks, had taken his shows off, did an internal review and found that Louis C.K., at least while they were in his employ or under their watch, had never done anything improper. Now, but, they aren't giving him his, but they aren't giving him his shows back. Well, I understand, but you think he has a lawsuit? Well, I think they were trying to stave off a lawsuit by doing that internal thing. Uh, but, yes, I think, they, I, if he, I think he should sue him. I really do. Yeah. I think it was a rush to judgment. Yeah, due uh, diligence. On their yeah, I mean, the, the incidents that they had talked about happened long before he ever had shows on FX. You know, it was his, in his earlier days of comedy, and I guess one time he pulled his penis and said, do you mind if I pull out my penis? And nobody said no, so he pulled it out. You know, and that, you know, but he, that he, could have been a joke, he, you he, know. Yeah, yeah, he didn't rape anybody. He didn't, uh, you know, force his sex on anybody. But that alone has made him, uh, you know, the movie never got released. He, all his series that he's been the uh, executive producer of, he's being taken off of as executive producer. They're keeping some of the shows, uh, but they're, they're, they're getting rid of him. And I, I just think 
after you find that you do an internal review and you see this to be true, you should then say, okay, if you want to come back, come back. So he's the fatty Arbuckle of our generation. No, he's not the fatty Arbuckle of our generation. That's a completely different story. <laughs> well, they, they, they ruined all his films. They, uh, you know, he, he didn't have anything going uh, after uh, the accusation. Well, but, so, so that there are people listening who probably don't even know who the fuck we're talking about. So let me explain for a brief second about Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. He was a silent film star. He was second only to Chaplin. Okay, that's how big he was as an international star. And in those days, you were an international star because motion pictures didn't talk. You didn't have a language barrier. Just sent over a print with different intertitles. That was all. And he was a big star, big, big star. And they held a party in San Francisco. He held a party in San Francisco because San Francisco was where all the Hollywood people would go for the weekend to have a, a good time. You know, and uh, they would come to San Francisco, and he booked a room, several rooms in the uh, St. Francis Hotel, and he held a party. But he and he, they, there was a woman by the name of Virginia Rappe. How do I remember these things? I can't remember my wife's name, but I can remember Virginia Rappe. Okay, and her name was Virginia Rappe, and uh, she was found dead at the party, and she was in a bathtub. And, uh, no, not in a bathtub. I think they had her on a bed at the time. What had happened is she had died. She had died of an internal hemorrhage. And so the Hearst newspapers, in their desire to sell newspapers, started really ginning up this whole story. And part of what they ginned up was that they, they, they kind of gave people in their imagination the weight of Fatty Arbuckle, which was enormous, against the weight of this frail woman. And when asking a doctor uh, what uh, could have possibly caused the internal hemorrhage, he said, well, it could happen from the insertion of something like a Coke bottle. <coughs> and that became the big deal, that she was penetrated by this brute, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, uh, with, a, with, a, with a Coke bottle. And that his and weight, fatty. yeah, well, what happened was, here's what really happened to Virginia Rappe. She was drunk out of her fucking skull, and they decided to put her in a tub of ice to um, uh, sober her up. And what happened was that caused the internal hemorrhage. Okay? Plain and simple. Well, the first trial hung jury. But already his career is ruined because Hearst has been writing all these articles coast to coast about him. Second, where was he? Se he was in L.A. when she I, when she died. Second yeah. trial, hung hung jury. City of San Francisco decides to go one more time, and the jury comes back one hundred percent not guilty. All right, and the judge makes an admonishment that the city of San Francisco and all the people involved owe an apology to Fatty Arbuckle, but it was too late. His career was ruined. He had been dropped by his studios. Uh, he, was, he finally went on and start, kept directing films, but under the name Will Be Good. And uh, it, it is maybe one of the saddest stories ever because also in the process, uh, he, there are still a lot of uh, Fatty Arbuckle films still there. I mean, my friend Shecky said, no, they didn't destroy all of them. But what they would do is in those days when they wanted to blow up a car in a movie, mm -hmm. films were made out of nitrate. And all you had to do was mm -hmm. take a match to a nitrate film and it would just, it would go into massive flames and explode. And they said, ah, we need to blow up this car. Go get some Arbuckle films from the, uh, from, you know. So about... Reclaim the silver? Uh, I, well, I, no, I heard about 90% of his work was, was, oh, was ruined. Nitrate. Now, Shecky says no. He says quite a bit more survived him. But nevertheless, it ruined a man's career. And he died in his 30s. He died quite young. And, and upon his death, his wife said she, he died of a broken heart. So let's be careful when we make these charges because it could be Fatty Arbuckle all over again. Only well, here we don't have uh, the Arbuckle case once. We have it many, many times over and over and over again with accusations being made by anonymous people. Now, hey, if you've done something terrible, I think you should have to suffer for it. I don't question that. 
But I think if you're not guilty, to have to suffer for it is wrong. And we have to be a little more prudent in our and more assiduous in our in our vetting of these situations. What do you think, Tom? Because you're you're the moral compass on this program. Oh, you call well, it. I'll tell you, Alex. I I I'm I'm perplexed about the whole thing. Uh, I understand there's a lot of uh, charges that uh, that uh, yeah they are serious, and I think the fact that women have not been taken seriously is is is. Uh, is is really uh, really a, something that needs to be corrected, and yet I see that, yeah, this that people can go overboard. I think you know. Well, but but you know, we know I, you know what we're you know, not. What I'm just saying is you know I think that that, that really what we need to do uh, approaches that what they've been doing in in Africa regarding uh, these uh, a type of of um, of legal process called uh, truth and reconciliation. Mm-hmm. And uh, and of course, in those in those circumstances, you know, after you know civil wars, you know, um, these are cases where people have been you know murdered, and 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 then these these people trying to 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 pick up the pieces after that. So that's the only thing I've I've been thinking of is is we need to we need to have a different type of legal process. We need to because because right now we've we've got. Well, the whole legal process we we have now in this country is a mess. I mean, it's it's all about vengeance, and we need to get beyond vengeance and and actually uh, get into what uh, some friends of mine call restorative justice. Well, you know, I I agree with you that for so long, when a woman has cried rape, uh, she was not taken seriously. Okay, uh, there's no question about that. On the other hand, are you solving the problem by yelling rape? and accusing somebody and then not having enough proof to actually prove it. You know what I'm saying? Are we not doing the same thing to men now and not believing them that we were doing to women? And the idea is to equalize everything, not to suddenly make the balance go the other way. Well, as I say, it, 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 we need, basically, we, we need some kind of way to, to get away from the blame and shame uh, in, in any case, hmm. and I don't know how that's going to happen, but I, I'm, I'm just thinking that that uh, the, the current system ju- is is just inadequate, and and we need to start thinking of other ways of of of, of coming yeah. to to uh, to to dealing with 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 with, uh, with situations like this. By the way, I want to. Uh, yes, Jeff had his hand up. Well, I was going to say uh, one thing that. Uh, maybe uh, five years ago, I don't know why I just picked that that year. But five years ago, uh, if you uh, had a woman who was saying, you know, I've been raped, I've been attacked, I've been taken care of poorly at the office, mm-hmm. uh, made sexual conversations and and yeah. didn't want to, whatever. Basically, at that time, it was like. Well, nice. Shut up and don't tell anybody, or you're going to get fired. And, and maybe five, ten years ago, that was the the standard. Obviously, the standard is changing now in the other direction. Well, you know something though. I I got to tell you though, Jeff. If I was working somewhere as a male, and I had a boss who was particularly egregious and uh, uh, abusive. In the way, that, and we've had abusive bosses in our lifetime, sure. you know. And I went to HR and I complained about him being abusive. I'd, I'd stand no. to have the same thing meted out to me. Nobody no. believed me, losing my job, all of that. So I don't know that it was just women that suffered this way. I mean, yes, far more than guys, but certainly uh, if any one of us had gone to these uh, HRs and said, hey, you know, they gave me a, you know, he, he, this person's been abusing me, uh, and and I've been abused by bosses. I've got to say that you know, not sexually, but I've been abused by them, and emotionally, just as bad as anything. Um, so you know, uh, uh, usually businesses would not believe the employee. That's really what the biggest problem, overall problem, was. Uh, and, but I and I understand. You know, I understand that that. Uh, Women for years have, have, have not been believed, but that doesn't mean that now we don't believe the guys. You know, we don't, 
We have to, you don't want the pendulum to swing all the way the other way. You want it to come to the center, you know, and that's where <laughs> justice and propriety are. And, and I just think a lot, of, a lot of people are being hurt in this thing just by simple accusations. I mean, the stuff against Franken was so minor, that, and yet he suffered in exactly the same way as Harvey Weinstein. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, like, uh, it's like he said here. Uh, uh, we don't uh, know uh, how uh, 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 Harvey Weinstein's going to suffer yet. Wait a minute, Garrison Keillor. Once again, if I'm guilty of harassment, then every employee who stole a pencil is guilty of embezzlement. You know, I mean, there has to be a, a, a certain weight given to these things. It's it's equal and appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, well, I, I'm trying to uh, just finish my point. Is that I think ten years ago there was no clear way to resolve these dish these differences. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Today, there is still no clear way mm -hmm. to dissolve these issues. Yeah, yeah. You can, the only thing that happens now is you're on TV or, or you're, uh, you're on, on the newspapers and, and, and you have to stand there with your wife and go, I never did anything. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, right. Uh, I mean, that's, it, that's the you know, resolution. Uh, and, and guess what? Your your name's not off the list. Your name is on the shit list forever. I don't know if you heard what I had said, that I don't think we've seen how much Harvey Weinstein is actually going to suffer. I don't think that. It, I don't. It I don't think. Really I don't think he's going to suffer much outside of the fact that he'll never work in Hollywood again. But yeah. that, you know, I'll tell you something. Part of the reason Harvey Weinstein became the poster child for all of this bad behavior is, number one, he engaged in it. But he secondly, was secondly, he was one of the most hated people in Hollywood. He had power, and he wielded it against everyone, male, female, whatever. He was maybe one of the most disliked people in Hollywood. So when finally they got the goods on him, and everybody jumped on Harvey. There was nobody there to catch him. That's you know, right. it was the same story with uh, our uh, our congressman here in uh, in New York, uh, oh. Weiner, Anthony Weiner. Weiner was a hell hellish when he was in Congress. He would get up and berate the Congress for their behavior and so on and so forth. Very unliked. I, I loved him. I loved him, too. I did, too. I loved him. Now that speech he gave uh, was one of the best speeches of all time. But anyway, uh, uh, the fact was, when he suddenly got caught with his pants down, so to speak, there was nobody there to catch him. There was nobody there to defend him or to say, hey, he's okay, let's, get, let, let's let this thing pass. You know, so... Um, uh, uh, and then he made, of course, the same mistake over again. I mean, he, he, he was on the road to redemption, and then he all of a sudden, you know, had to do another picture. Now, of all of the people that have been accused in the last uh, six months, uh, are there any of them that are actually well-liked that should have been uh, or have been caught? Uh, I, I, uh, I, think, I think Louis C.K. is well-liked generally by people in the business you know he was not disliked uh did anyone come to his aid or uh, uh, stand up for him no as a matter of fact the one woman who should have stood up for him was pamela adlin now, i yeah. don't know if you know the name well but she does a show called better things that, that, that she, she was california cation also yeah she and um and and uh, what's his name and and louis louis ck produced together and louis ck directed and they both wrote all the episodes and he pretty much gave her a one of the best, what I would say, one of the best showcases for her talent. Uh, Californication, and she was playing a character. This thing really allowed her to show what she could do. Mm -hmm. And he also, when it came to doing it, way before Californication, she did a show with Louis C.K. at HBO called Lucky Louis. So Louis has always been in her corner. He's always made her a producer on shows that he's done. This is somebody that would should say, Hey, Louis's okay. She threw him to the fucking wolves because she wanted to save her career. You yeah. know when she should have yeah. been defending him. Uh, you know he. I mean he did everything for Pamela Adlin. 
uh, and they did everything together. I mean, they produced a lot of shows together. You show Louie. Uh, she was a writer on it. She was, I think she may have directed an episode or two. I mean, he always included her in any project that he was doing. In fact, in the movie that never got released, which I've seen, she's in the movie. You know, so, I mean, I, I, I felt that she should have come to his defense, and she didn't. I think out of her own particular desire to keep her career going at the same rate it was going. Eh, I guess you make your choices whether you're going to be Judas or not, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, but when we talk about these other people, I mean, Kevin Spacey, most people I think hated. He was not well liked <laughs> in, in the Hollywood community. Oh. Huh? Hey, uh, Alex, did you notice that uh, Christopher Plummer actually got uh, Academy Award nomination for the part he took from Spacey? Oh, yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> He worked like two weeks. It makes no sense, okay? <laughs> it's not like it was a bravura of performance, but they were trying to say something. Um, they didn't was nominate... Paid, huh? Was Christopher Plummer paid in a uh, different way than the female... Uh, oh, he read uh, uh, ...when he stood in for the part? Well, uh, to begin with, uh, uh, here's the story that they've been yelling about, and that is that... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, uh, Walter. Uh, what's his name? Walberg. Michelle Mark Wal Wal Wahlberg got paid when they did the reshoots. He got right. play, paid something like uh, one and a half million dollars. And what's her name? The other actress, Michelle Mich Williams, Michelle Williams only got I think a hundred thousand. Oh my! That's well, one thousand. Right. One thousand. Well, what did, what did, but what, everybody went. Oh, that's that's not right. You know, that's terrible. It's women getting paid less than men. No, it's this woman having a worse agent than Wahlberg's because Wahlberg had a writer in his contract that if there had to be any reshoots over a certain amount of time that he would get a million and a half dollars. Her oh. contract said. You know, whatever the amount, of ten thousand or something like that, and that's where it was. By the way, these two agents worked at the same agency together, but they worked competitively. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was just a bad contract. It wasn't oh, that anybody sure was, was trying to pay her less. So Wahlberg, because he was taking all the heat for it, decided to. I forget. He either is giving the money to charity or he's giving some of the money to Michelle Williams. Uh, I think he gave it to charity, but uh, what I wonder is. Some actors and actresses have a bigger draw than others and can demand more for their services. Yeah, yeah. Why would one have anything to do with the other if maybe Wahlberg, you know, and I don't think, I have no idea what his demand is, but... He, you know, has, maybe, a good, he has a big demand. His films um, do pretty well at the box office. He's I, a, so couldn't he negotiate a better deal? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, the, Mich so, the Michelle. And, and what's her name? Michelle. Uh, I forgot her last name again. Michelle Williams. Is Michelle it? Williams. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Williams. Uh, uh, she she has certain box office, but you know the you know the top box office draw is when it comes to making money for doing films, and she's had some bombs too. Is uh, Jennifer Lawrence? Lawrence gets paid a fortune per film, more than any guy in Hollywood. You know, so so there, you know, this inequity. I just I just don't see it as a male it, female. It, it, thing. No, it, it, so it, talent, it, no it, it isn't a male female yes. thing. You know, uh, the other day there was this comedian Monique. You know who Monique is? A uh, black this, comedian. Uh, have you said? Or, black or, or let's say yeah. Let's say alleged comedian. Uh, and she said that well, she wants people to boycott Netflix. And this was on TMZ, and they said, why do you want them to boycott Netflix? And she says, because they only want to pay me $500,000 to do a special. And, and they, gave, they gave Amy Schumer $10 million or something like that. Oh, my God, really? Well, Monique. Don't take the job. It, well, yeah, it, to begin with, I ain't cry, and nobody's going to cry over the fact that you were only offered $500,000 thousand dollars to do a special but uh, let's face it Schumer's a bigger draw or at least she's perceived to be a bigger draw and when she goes in and wants a couple of million dollars she's going to get it you're not going to get Sh Schumer money and and so she wanted everybody to boycott Netflix because they wouldn't give her the <laughs> same money as Amy Schumer 
<laughs> well, yeah, and you know, I don't like Amy Schumer, but I, I would imagine her draw is greater than the other well, one. So I, why I, should there, you know, it, it's not like two guys or, or a man and a woman are standing on an assembly line yeah. and each one assembles 13 widgets an hour. Well, no, you know? here's so, what happens. I hmm. don't believe in that whole system because I can take a movie and have no stars in it and have it make a fortune. And another movie I can put, uh, you know, Jennifer Lawrence and... Uh, Oh, I don't know who else. So who's another big name? And 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 uh, give me a, give me a male name that's a draw. Let's, uh, how about Hugh Jackman? Because I think you Hugh, Hugh Jackman or whatever in the same film, and it could be a big bomb. I mean, she had a bomb recently, uh, but uh, being stuck on a spaceship, whether they're the only people alive on the spaceship, I can't remember the name of it now. And that thing just bombed. It tanked. But the fact is, she's perceived to be box office gold, and that is not true. The fact is, you can a good example would be this film Get Out, which was made for five million dollars, basically with a cast nobody ever heard of before, right. by a director who had never directed a film before, Jordan Peele, of Key and Peele, <laughs> and it was a masterful film. It was a great idea, and it it did huge business especially in the black areas because it was a horror film for black audiences about a horror that could happen to a black person where he goes to a white neighborhood and they're killing off black people you know but it's 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 a horror story and yes. it's a brilliant I, picture I, I, and it I, made a fortune and it made it it made back uh, he made it made it for five million it made something like i don't know 250 300 million dollars okay God. Uh, and has been nominated for an Academy Award. He's been nominated for Best Director. So that shows you don't need box office. You don't need a track record to put asses in seats in a movie. It's the movie. It's the plot. It's the storyline. It's whether it works or it doesn't work. And whether word of mouth gets around, hey, that's a great film. So, you know, you can go out and hire Jennifer Lawrence all you want, but if you put her in a stinking, rotten film, she's not going to put asses in seats. Well, they yeah, might but, initially. But somebody still has to distribute it properly. Well, yeah, I mean, but most of these major studios have decent distribution. Yeah. Know, so that's not the problem. Uh, but the, the the problem is, is that there's still this idea in Hollywood that oh, so and so is box office. We got to get so and so. He's yeah. box office, and it, it doesn't mean shit to a tree. Tell you the truth, it's it's the way they they played that game for the fifty years, a hundred years. I mean, I can Can you name a single actor who can? They can put him in a movie, and he can open it with big numbers just because he's in it. I don't think there is one anymore. Sylvester Stallone. But <laughs> yeah, that's right. Why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, uh, it, it's just not, uh, it, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. You know, it's, um, uh, so, I mean, so this idea that uh, of Monique going, hey, you know, I want $2 million just like, uh, just like Amy Schumer. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, you're just not in the you're not in the same league. I know you're black and you're fat, and that's a minority. But you know, come on. The the reason they're only giving you five hundred thousand is they don't think they're going to have that many people watching it. But they're willing to pay you to do one. You know, say thank God for that. Maybe you'll do one and it'll get great numbers. <clears throat> and the next time you say, I want a million, I want two million. But first, go and do the one. I'd do the one. I, if I were agent, I'd say do the one for five hundred thousand. You just get your ass on Netflix and let everybody see the, what what good you've got. You know, uh, they got a lot of other comedians yes. on Netflix I never heard of before, and I'm sure they're not paying them two million like Amy Schumer either. Of course, if you were the agent, you'd say to do the half, uh, you know, the five hundred thousand because uh, the agent gets fifty Gs. No, but that isn't the point. <laughs> that isn't the point. You know, there, there's there many times there's something to be proven here. You know. Uh, quite frankly, I think if she went on uh, Netflix, five hundred thousand is too much to pay. That's you a know, lot. yeah. Uh, the fact that they offered her five hundred thousand, I think, is is enormous. I, uh, I never heard of her. Yeah. Well, she won. The, she was nominated for an Academy Award for Precious. Oh, Remember that oh, movie about the fat black girl? 
Is I this an enormous fat black girl? Yeah, but that's not that's not Monique. Monique played her mother, the less fat girl. She comes out eating a sandwich for the stand up. Throw her another hero. Yeah. And, <laughs> and when she finishes it, the act is over. Uh, but you know, so I mean, I just, what we're doing is we're having people get trivial now about all of this. Yeah. And what was oh, the, she's the, just the, well, the most trivial one, they uh, um, uh, Aziz, what's his name? Uh, yeah. Aziz um, Ansari yeah. uh, uh, was accused, and a lot of people came to his defense. They felt the accusation was 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 false. They felt that it was uh, not anything really all that terrible, except a bad date, or a date gone bad. And uh, they they a lot of people came to his defense, saying, you know, really, it's not right of us to to give him a bad time. I guess they exchanged phone numbers. They uh, got together again after meeting each other out of town. Uh, and, you know, she came to his apartment. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it, uh, yeah, he probably did get a, a bad deal. And, and of course now she's just having a, a memory of this. Well, you know, I mean, uh, oh, well, he the next morning he called to say, I want to tell you what a nice time I had last night. And I, I really want, you know, which is a nice thing to do. I always I always did that. I would always call the person I had slept with the night before if they didn't stay overnight and say, I just want to say, I hope you had a nice time last night. I really enjoyed my time with you, even if I never planned on seeing them again, because I really didn't have that good a time. I just felt that was paying respect to somebody. Uh, and he did that. And she said, well, you saw it the wrong way. I didn't have a good time. Well, I'm sorry if you, you know, you were up on the, the supposedly up on the, on the, on the, the, uh, the uh, kitchen uh, table or whatever on the uh, counter, ki kitchen counter. Yeah. Uh, with your legs spread and he was going down on you and you let him, he let, you let him make it come to an orgasm. Uh, but you didn't have a good time. You didn't. He didn't do any. He, she didn't do anything to him. You know, it was all one way according to this description. Uh, and and she had a bad time the night before. I'm sorry. It wasn't a good enough orgasm. I'm sorry. But should have been two. Or or on sorry, I should say. Yeah. Uh, but it, a lot of people felt very sorry for him because they, number one, he's got a. a, a, a uh, he is he the which one is the, is he the one that uh, is on He's Netflix got series, the Netflix series, and I don't like that series that much, and I don't think that much of him, but boy, uh, I felt bad for him. I really felt I, bad. I for enjoyed him. Uh, uh, the couple of seasons that were out there. Yeah, um, you know, but I mean, uh, the other thing is, do not win yourself an award anywhere and wear a times out button because if you go to the golden globes that's what happened to these two guys it happened to franco and it happened to this guy the next day women were doing anonymous tweets about bad behavior uh, have we heard any more about franco franco has uh he didn't duck the screen actors guild awards he didn't get nominated for an oscar which he probably would have been nominated for an oscar if this hadn't happened okay but it happened, and now he wasn't nominated because he got nominated for the Golden Globes and the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Uh, there was no reason he shouldn't be nominated for an Academy Award. But you know, that's the way it goes. You know, it's it it it's uh, it's the uh, and and I don't know. It, here here was a question that was brought up today to um, uh, the lawyer um, all, uh, Gloria Allred on TMZ, oddly enough. And they said, should a person like, uh, like say, James Franco, be judged on his behavior as opposed to his performance? And her answer was, well, you have to answer for that sort of thing. That was her attitude about it. But it is a good question. I mean, when you're saying, hey, we're, we're gonna decide whether we're gonna give this guy a nomination for best actor or not, do you, don't you judge him on being an actor, you know, rather than good or bad behavior? Mm -hmm. I guess you do because we don't see Bill Cosby being made comedian of the year anytime soon. So, mm -hmm. by the way, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Cosby doesn't look as bad now, does he? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like well, almost everybody from up on the show. Sometimes. Everybody's forgotten about Cosby. Wasn't he supposed to go back on trial or something? 
Yes. He actually did a he actually did a show the other night um, in uh, somewhere near Philadelphia, Germantown. Yeah. He did a show at a club in Germantown, and a lot of the jokes he did uh, was about the fact that he's going blind. Really, he is going yeah. blind. In fact, I think he is blind, isn't he? Yeah, he Almost is blind. Pretty much. Yeah. Did you have your hand up, Jeff? Yeah. Nope. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. Nope. Oh, okay. I thought you had your hand up. Uh, maybe right. be a spokesman for uh, Match.com. Who? Uh, oh, uh, Cosby. Yeah. Cosby. Yeah. Um, in the roofie section. Yeah. Match.com. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, uh, I remember when he was the poster child for bad. But, you know, in a way, these guys, I mean, by the time they got around to Cosby, who had been known about for years in Hollywood, um, his career was pretty much finished. I mean, it, it, the, the, the meat of his career was gone. The same thing's true. Weinstein, eh, probably had a couple of good more years. Uh, Garrison Keillor, you know, he retired a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, how's it going to hurt these people? But I worry about Louis C.K. I know Louis. He, <coughs> uh, he uh, used to have him on the show. And he, uh, I like Louis. I thought he was a decent guy. And I hate to see it happen to him, you know? Uh, and um, um, who else? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, Woody Allen, they popped up again recently because... They once again brought back the Dylan Farrow accusations, which had been, by the way, investigated by the police and found to not be true. Um, and uh, so now a lot of actresses are refusing to work with Woody Allen. Where before they were all jumping over each other to work for Woody Allen. So, mm -hmm. you know, but again, Woody Allen, another case of a guy, what is he, 80, 81, something like that? He's, mm -hmm. he's up there. Um, Still working. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he's had pretty much a good career. And if tomorrow it ends because of this, what what big major damage is there? Except that, you know, he'd really like to keep making movies. It sullies the movies that he did make. No, it you doesn't. Know? No, it doesn't. Yeah. But you're going to go back. You're going to go back and look at Manhattan where he goes where he's dating a 16 year old girl. And and you're going to you're going to. Uh, that is one of the most brilliant films ever made. I got to tell you. Uh, yeah. And and you had to know he had gone out with a 16-year-old because I went out with a very young girl at the time that I didn't know was uh, underage. And when I found out, I immediately dropped her. Uh, but she was about to turn 18, and I dropped her anyway because I, I – I, yeah. What do you, you give me that look for, Scott? What do you mean? I know where you dropped her, too. You probably dropped her on her dick again, didn't you? <laughs> Back in the cradle. And, but, but I knew mm. what it was like to go out with a really young girl. And the part that Mariel Hemingway played, I said, he wrote these words that are coming out of her mouth. He said, he's been there. You know, he knows what it's about. Otherwise, he couldn't report it like he did in that screenplay. But I think that's a brilliant film. And I think there's several brilliant films he's done that have nothing, you know, that, that has a hard time only because of the relationship between Woody Allen and the young girl. Uh, but mm -hmm. outside of that, uh, it's a brilliant film, and so are a lot of the other films he did. He's done some terrible films, but that's what Woody Allen's been good and bad, good and bad. Some pictures good, some other pictures just mm -hmm. brilliant. And as a matter of fact, Woody Allen, in just the last 10 years, made the biggest box office picture he ever did, Midnight in Paris. It was the yeah. Yeah. biggest yeah. box office he ever did. So, you know, even at, at this late stage in his life, he's, he's turning out hits, but he also turns out flops, too. But they pay for them because he makes them so cheaply, you know, because they're such simple ideas that, uh, yeah. you know, they're willing to bankroll them. Because, okay, so he does two bad ones and he does a hit, okay? He makes money on the hit. The two we don't lose that much money on. So he's bankable. Yes, uh, uh, Tom, I just had to say I was thinking, you know, when you were talking about the Fatty Arbuckle, there's actually a Fatty Arbuckle reference in the uh, Purple Rose of Cairo. Is there really? Yeah, there's a reference to Fatty Arbuckle in in Purple Rose of Cairo, 
when this character is, uh, you know, gets off the screen and they're trying yeah, to right. find him. He's, oh, they're, you know, this, this is, this is terrible. You know, we're, we're, we're the, we might have another Fatty Arbuckle situation on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. It's, it's a great movie. I mean, he had a lot of great movies, and I think he will stand the test of time uh, far more than uh, uh, far more than Harvey Weinstein's films. You know, the ones he's produced. I think the only ones that are going to last are the Tarantino films that Weinstein yeah. produced. Yeah, definitely the Tarantino. And hey, hmm? you got anything to recommend for uh, you know Netflix, TV, Showtime, any anything out there uh, that uh, you've discovered that is why I can make, uh, I, can make re- I can make a, a good animation uh, recommendation, Coco. Yeah. I, hear, I, I have a, co- a copy of it. I, I have yet to watch Beautiful it. Beautiful movie. Maybe not the, one of the best stories they've done, but definitely visually. The, I, I call it a visual masterpiece. It is a, just a very, very beautiful movie. Yeah. Well, they say you know it's probably they say it's probably the best animated film of the year. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it's, it. It's dominated. Yeah. You know, yeah. See what happens. But, um, uh, it's a great movie. Uh, when you're saying anything on Netflix. Uh, well, of course, you've seen Godless, right? No. Phil? You haven't? Oh, my God. Watch Godless. That's uh, terrible. What do you mean it's terrible? terrible. <laughs> How, wait a minute, wait a minute, Scott. Why is it terrible? <laughs> He's Catholic. It is so slow. It's like watching paint dry. It's it happens like to be... Painfully slow. It happens to be, uh, what, seven episodes, I think it is? And each one of them is an hour and a half. No, each one of them is about an hour and change. Hour and twenty. No, hour and minimum. No, Look I think it up. Look I think it up. I think it, I think it it's terrific. Did you watch it to the end? Yes. And you didn't like that ending. So, it was so. I won't ruin it, but just unbelievably stupid ending. Okay. Did you like it? <laughs> I did not like it. No. Wait a minute. How about how about Jeff? How about if you want, Bill? Please. You'll waste your life watching that. Show. I Stop. always smile. Wait, wait, wait a minute. 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 <laughs> are you are you are are you saying you didn't like it? First of all, and and uh, didn't you think Jeff Daniels was terrific? Yes, he was good. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, I think it's great. But, the, but the, everything else was was just yeah, horrible. Scott's Scott's taste is up his ass. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'd agree to disagree, only I don't believe in, in agreeing to disagree. I'm right, you're okay, wrong. So, so we, <laughs> we got Coco, which everybody says is a beautiful movie. Yeah, but it's not available except for theaters. Right? Which it's is, not on uh, Netflix. Uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, come say, come sa. You know, yeah. uh, okay, one you a New Yorker, San Francisco guy, and a Western, and I'm in Texas, okay? It's the worst Western thing ever, okay? That's I it. think it's one of the best Westerns ever made. <laughs> You're just being a Phil right now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and he's good at it. No, I think God, Godless, I thought, was terrific. But anything else on Netflix, there was something I was watching on Netflix the other day, but I can't remember what it was now. So apparently it wasn't that important. You know. It, Did you watch Travelers? You ever seen no. that? Is that good? I like I like it, but you might not. It, it, I just like time travel. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I watched I think. an episode or two when it played on the networks, and I wasn't that fond of it. What network was it on? I don't I even think know. It was, was it like British? On, no, or Canadian? I, I think it was on P, uh, T, TBS or something like okay, that. Okay, okay. Or maybe okay, on yeah. Sci Fi. It, it could have been on yeah. Sci Fi. I'm struggling to get through uh, the, the, this, uh, the Americans. On, on Netflix, there's oh. going to be another season on the uh, uh, coming up, uh, its final season, and I'm trying to get through uh, all the other seasons. And I think I'm in the fifth season, fourth episode, and it is, it's really tough. Well, I couldn't watch it. I tried. Even the one of the one of the episodes was actually filmed in our building here. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, hey, hey, you hear that? That's the theme. That, Hey, it's so good to have you here tonight, Tom. And w- with that new uh, um, machine of yours, your picture looks great. It's okay. not murky, and it, it really you 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 come into the 21st century. It's <laughs> your Wi-Fi is hot. And I love the fact that on his new Skype. Don't forget, I asked you to 
and for me to for you to make me a, uh, for you to be a contact with me to make sure okay. you do that and accept it so that we can have you on the list but on his new machine he has himself up as Thomas Yamaguchi so let's treat him with respect folks Thomas uh, yes. <laughs> Phil Meyer thank you so much for being with us tonight thank you Tony for joining us Scott Boddicker your taste is up your ass <laughs> and Jeff, thank you so much for calling. Why doesn't everybody just wave a good, big, good, big, fat goodbye to everybody? There they are. That's the citizens panel, folks. That's what we're talking about. Those are the guys who make the show what it is. Not me. I just sit here and, and try. Okay? I just try. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I uh, got to close out. Uh, yeah, tonight. Okay. Just closed out. Uh, uh, Skype uh, and uh, getting it ready for the next show and you know what the next show is folks of course it's Jack and Amy and uh, the intersection which follows immediately over most of the same station I moved a piece of equipment down here with my foot anyway I'm going to be back in uh, let's see at mid midnight at 1 o'clock it's uh, Connections and then tomorrow night at 9.30 Eastern Time it's Damien Chaplin and the exchange. Uh, meantime, I'll see you again tomorrow night myself at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.